Hello everyone, I am Dr. Mohit Kapoor. I am a junior resident at Department of Brain Diagnosis, AIMS Vibhinagar, Hyderabad. And today, I will present my seminar on the topic MRI, Shoulder Joint, Anatomy. And the things we will assess here are bones, tendons, labrum, ligaments, bursae, and neurovascular bundles. Starting first with the bones. So this is a diagrammatic representation of the scapula having a coracoid process, spinous process and the acromion process. And this acromion process is articula articulating superiorly with the clavicle. We can also see the glenoid labrum or glenoid fossa which is articulating with the head of the humerus. Now on this MRI section we can see this bony part and this is the coracoid process. The importance of this is that this is the most anterior most bony projection and thus if we can see the coracoid we can know that we are in the anterior sections of the film. Next if we are looking for the uh, bones then we should also look for the marrow edema and for that we use sternal sections and in this sternal sections if we are going from anterior to posterior you have to look at four potential sites for this marrow edema that is first one coracoid process second one anterior inferior glenoid process third one superior greater to prosody and fourth one superior posterior humeral head next is the acromion process process we have a sextal sections and on this sextal sections we can see the acromion and based on the morphology of this acromion we have a biglianic classification according to which type 1 means the acromion is flat inferiorly type 2 means it's curved and it's concavely curved type 3 means there's a hook and type 4 means it's convexly curved and as we can see type 2 is the most common of all and type 3 and 4 are associated with increased incidence of shoulder impingement as it will cause impingement over the supraspinatus muscle. Next coming to the tendons, we have uh, rotator cuff muscles and biceps tendons. Rotator cuff muscles include supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor. They all will arise from the posterior aspect of scapula and insert on the greater porosity. So if we have the scapula here, posterior to the scapula we have a spinous process and uh, superior to the spinous process we have the origin of the supraspinatus muscle which will arise and insert on the greater porosity. We, uh, and inferior to the spine we will have insert, uh, origin of the infraspinatus and teres minor which will again go and insert on the greater porosity. And anterior to anterior side of the scapula, we have origin of the subscapulis muscle, which will go and insert on the lesser to porosity. And between this lesser and greater to porosity, we will see long head of biceps tendon. So, if we can see, this is the muscle which is arising from the posterior aspect of scapula and inserting on the greater to porosity. And this is supraspinatus muscle. Next, we can see a muscle arising from the anterior aspect of scapula going and inserting on the lesser tuberosity. This is subscapularis muscle. Third, we can see uh, these muscles arising from the posterior aspect of scapula and inserting on the lesser tuberosity. These are infraspinatus and teres minor. And next, we can see a tendon which is going in this precipital groove between the uh, less, uh, lesser and greater tuberosity and this is called as long head of biceps tendon. First starting with the supraspinatus muscle. So we can see uh, this is the, these are the coronal sections and we can see supraspinatus very beautifully on the coronal sections. So we have a chromic clavicle joint. Below the chromic clavicle joint we can see supraspinatus going and inserting on the greater tuberosity. So in this MRI, MRI image we can see this is the acromic clavicle joint and below this acromic clavicle joint we can see supraspinatus going and inserting on the greater tuberosity. We can also see infraspinatus and teres minor muscle on the coronal sections as we can see the spine and below the spine we will see infraspinatus and teres minor. So the spine below the spine we will see infraspinatus and teres minor. However, to see infraspinatus we prefer axial sections as we can see muscle its standard and its insertion very beautifully on an axial section 
नेक्स्ट सब स्कैपलर स्टैंडर्ड सब स्कैपलर स्टैंडर्ड कैन बी सी कैन बी सीन बिलो द कॉरकॉइड प्रोसेस आई गेट टोल यू वी हैव टू लुक फॉर एक्नोमिक ग्राफिकल जॉइंट एंड बिलो द एक्नोमिक ग्राफिकल जॉइंट वी कैन सी सुपर स्पाइनिटर्स फॉर सब स्कैपलर वी कैन सी द कॉरकॉइड प्रोसेस एंड बिलो द कॉरकॉइड प्रोसेस वी कैन सी द सब स्कैपलर इज मसल सो हेयर वी कैन सी एक्नोमिक ग्राफिकल जॉइंट बिलो द एक्नोमिक वी विल सी सुपर स्पाइनिटर्स मसल सो एंड लाइक दैट we can see coracoid process and below the coracoid we will see subscapularis but again to see subscapularis more beautifully we can use axial sections as on axial section we can see subscapularis muscle with tendon and its insertion on the lesser to prosity so ultimately coronal section on coronal sections we can see supraspinatus beautifully muscle its insertion very beautifully we can see on coronal on axial we can see infraspinatus and subscapularis whereas sagittal section we can see all of this muscles very beautifully but the main importance of sagittal section is to look for muscle bulk and to look for muscle atrophy or fatty infiltration so again acromic clavicular joint below the acromic clavicular joint we will have supraspinatus going and inserting on the greater prosthesis this is a axillary mri section here we can see this is the humerus this one is the scapula this is the uh, glenoid cavity and we can see and we can see uh, this is the uh, scapula uh, anterior to scapula we can see subscapularis muscle we can see subscapularis tendon and it can insertion on the lesser tuberosity we can also see uh, posterior to the scapula we can see infraspinatus muscle we can see infraspinatus tendon and its insertion on the cradle prosody between the infraspinatus and subscapularis muscle between the cradle prosody and lesser prosody we will have precipital groove and in this precipital groove we can see long head of biceps tendon and we can see a transverse humeral ligament above this so again on this coronal section we can see acromial clavicular joint below the acromial clavicular joint we can see supraspinatus muscle going and inserting here now come into the various part of this muscle so first part is this this is the muscle this tendon so between this this number 1 is the myotendinous junction number 2 this is the side where it is getting inserting on the greater tuberosity so this part is called as footprint or enthesis and now come into the third part this is around 1 to 1.5 cm uh, behind the uh, insertion and this is called as critical zone the significance of critical zone is that this is less vascular as compared to rest of the muscle and so this is the most common site of tear in cases of degeneration however if tear are secondary to some traumatic etiology then most common site is this myotendinous junction but tear secondary to degeneration most common site is critical zone when we have uh, we have seen the coronal section let's see the axial sections in this axial section the first muscle we can see this anterior most muscle here this will be pectoralis major just behind the pectoralis major this small muscle will be pectoralis minor and this will be the axillary artery and vein then coming to this we can see the humeral head here we above the humeral head we can see this will be the insertion of supraspinatus this will be the scapula and it is scapula this will be the subscapularis muscle this will be the infraspinatus muscle this will be the supraspinatus muscle and this and this is the deltoid muscle now coming to the sagittal sections here we can see this is the scapula this is the spine and tear the scapula we will see so uh, subscapularis above the above the spine we will see supraspinatus inferior to the spine we will see t minor and uh, infraspinatus and t minor now we have seen uh, the coronal axial and sagittal sections now we will talk about the biceps so i have told you biceps have two head A short head and a long head. Short head will arise from the coracoid process. Long head will arise from the 
lip of the glenoid fossa where it will be horizontal pulley and a vertical part vertical part will transverse in this bicipital groove and uh, this will be kept in its position by a transverse humeral ligament and then this long head and short head fuse to form a common belly and this common belly is inserted on the radial tuberosity here we can see this is the acromomic clavicle joint we can see the supraspinatus below it we can see this is the glenoid cavity this will be the superior labrum this will be the inferior labrum and uh, this superior glenoid like this is the anterior superior glenoid lip and here we will have insertion of the long head of biceps sorry origin of the long head of biceps and then it will go uh, in the horizontal part then a pulley part and then we will have a vertical part of long head so let's see we can see a uh, uh, we can see its origin uh, its horizontal part its pulley part and then it's going down into a vertical part so we can see there is three parts of the long end of biceps also here then we come into the rotator interval it's a triangular space between supraspinatus uh, supraspinatus subscapularis and coracoid if you can see like this will be the acroma this will be the supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor this will be the subscapular this will be the coracoid so this area is the rotator interval and it will contain this coraco to humerus this ligament and this is called as coraco humeral ligament we will also see superior glenoid humeral ligament here we will see fat here and we will see the long head of biceps tendon here so those are the uh, content of the rotator interval the coming to the biceps pulley system like i told you from coracoid to humerus we will have a coraco humeral ligament but if we remove this we will see a biceps going underneath and surrounding it we will see the superior glenoid humeral ligament but if we see this uh, diagram carefully we can see on the medial aspect the superior glenoid humeral ligament is parallel to the biceps but as it's going to, uh, going laterally uh, superior glenoid humeral ligament is going inferior to the biceps tendon uh, to form this pulley type configuration Again, we can see as we are more medial, uh, superior glenoid humeral ligament is parallel to the biceps tendon, but as we are going more laterally, it's becoming more and more inferior to the biceps tendon. This is MR image is shown the same. Now this is the transfer section I have told uh, uh, um, again. So scapularis muscle tendon insertion on the lateral tuberosity, infraspinatus muscle tendon insertion on the lateral tuberosity. Biceps muscle uh, between the bicipital groove, then we have uh, transverse humeral ligament here. Next, coming to the labrum, I have told you that this is the glenoid cavity. This is a very flat structure, but it has to articulate the humeral head, and so to articulate the humeral head, we have a labrum. The main function of labrum is that it deepens the glenoid cavity, so we can better articulate the humeral head within. So this labrum is a fibrocartilage structure which will deepen the glenoid fossa. It also has attachment for the long head of the biceps. We have seen this attachment before also. So long head of bicep will attach on the superior labrum. We will also see the superior glenoid humeral ligament. We have seen this also in the sexual section. We have seen the superior glenoid humeral ligament attaching to, to the labrum also. We have seen this in sexual section. And then we will attach on the medial glenoid humeral ligament also and inferior glenoid humeral ligaments also. So this MRI image we have uh, I told you before we will see a cricohumeral ligament, superior glenoid humeral ligament, middle glenoid humeral ligament, and inferior glenoid humeral ligaments. Postural labrums are first was like superior, inferior, anterior posture, but now it's more like superior, anterior, superior, anterior, inferior, inferior posture, inferior posture, superior. Now it's it has been described like this. Now coming to the MRI images, we can see this is the axial section. And so this will be the glenoid and labrums will appear as a triangular hypotense areas. So this triangular hypotense area will be anterior labrum. This triangular hypotense area will be the posterior labrum. Now coming to the coronal sections. Here you can see this triangular hypotense area superior. This is the superior labrum. And this triangular hypotense area inferior. This is the inferior labrum. Here again we can see the long head of biceps going 
and attaching to the superior labrum. Coming to the normal variants of the labrum, we have sublabral cells, sublabral foramen, and before complex. Starting with the sublabral cells, this is the most common variant. It is a cleft or a recess between the superior labrum, that is 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock position, between the labrum and the glenoid cavity. And this will be a thin, linear, smooth uh, recess. So, between the labrum and the glenoid cavity, we will see a thin, smooth uh, recess. And this will be less than 3 mm and this will go medially. And so this is called a superior glenoid labrum. Based on this, we have a basal labral attachment attached for solar type 1, 2, and 3. But main thing is we need, we need to know how to differentiate, differentiate this sublabral cells from a slap tear. So sublabral cells will be smooth, uh, regular, and it will be less than 3 mm and it will go medially. Whereas a slab tear will be irregular and extend laterally. Like if instead of going midly, it is going laterally. So this is a slab tear. So you can see this is the superior labrum. And between the labrum and the glenoid, we, are, we have a fluid cavity like this. So this is a sublabral recess. But here we can see this is the triangular superior labrum and we can see fluid. Uh, going between the labrum, mainly it's going laterally. So this is a slab tear. So this is how we should be able to differentiate a sublabral recess and a slab tear. Sublabral foramen. This will be uh, localized attachment at one o'clock to the three o'clock position. Before complex, it, this is another entity. In this anterior superior labrum, that is one o'clock to three o'clock position labrum, it is absent, and so the middle glenoid humeral ligament. Uh, uh, becomes thick and cord like to compensate for it so here we can see in uh, we can see this is the clinical cavity we can see the posterior labrum but we cannot see the anterior labrum so we are not able to see the anterior labrum but as we go down we can see this thickened cord like middle humeral ligament and this is called as deferred complex coming next to the ligaments we have a coracocervical uh, ligament, coracohumeral ligament, superior, middle and inferior glenohumeral ligaments. We have talked about this, we have talked about this, we have coracohumeral ligament. If we remove this, we will see the long head of biceps and the superior ligament. We have talked about their configuration, biceps, polystyrene, we have talked about, we have seen in middle glenohumeral ligament and inferior glenohumeral ligaments attachment to the biceps, uh, sorry, uh, glenoid labrum here. A glenoid labrum attachment with all of this we have seen. The thing with this ligaments is superior uh, glenohumeral ligament will not be discriminated from the superior labrum. If the glenohumeral ligament will not be discriminated from the inferior labrum and middle glenohumeral ligament cannot be differentiated from the anterior labrum. So uh, this is this is something which needs to be kept in mind. So here we can see this is the colon section. We will see number of one is this muscle which is seen a lot many times before below this acromioclavical joint quadrant inserting in the peritoneal prostate this muscle will be the supraspinatus muscle then coming to the number two number two will be just below this you can see this is the glenoid cavity and this area this will be the superior this will be the superior labrum then number three this inferior one this is the inferior labrum so the thing we have to fit my superior labrum will have superior glenoid ligament also Inferior labrum will have inferior glenohumeral ligament also, and below this this area is the axillary recess. This is also important. This we have seen before. This is the coraco uh, humeral ligament. This is the superglenohumeral ligament. This is the rotator interval. You can see your sagittal sections. Uh, Anterior section, uh, sorry, uh, axillary sections. We can see it, number one will be number one will be this one this will be the glenoid this will be the anterior labrum and the middle glenohumeral ligament number two will be the posterior labrum so number two we have seen the middle labrum. number three will be the posterior labrum number four will be the infraspinatus muscle tendon its insertion uh, subscapulus muscle its in tendon its insertion by biceps we have, we have seen all of these things
सो सुपीरियर लेबर वी विल सी सुपीरियर क्यूनो ह्यूमर लेगमेंट इनफीरियर क्यूनो ह्यूमर लेगमेंट इनफीरियर लेबर मेडियल क्यूनो ह्यूमर लेगमेंट इन एंटीरियर लेबर आगे नोटेड इंटरवल वी हैव सीन वी हैव सीन द कोरक दिस इज द सुप्रास्पाइनेटस इंफ्रास्पाइनेटस एस्टीरियस मंडर एक्रोमियन कोरकोइड ह्यूमरस कोरको ह्यूमर लेगमेंट वी कैन सी सुपीरियर क्यूनो ह्यूमर लेगमेंट वी कैन सी द सबस्क्रैपुलरस लेगमेंट so we have seen all this now coming to the last thing that is the bursas uh, so second last thing bursas bursas can be subacromial subdeltoid bursa subsampleus bursa and subcoracoid bursa so like i have told you this before this muscle below the acromial clavicle this is the supraspinatus just above the supraspinatus we have a uh, small fluid uh, recess this is called as subacromial subdeltoid bursa so this will be Above the supraspinatus, below the acromion, and this will extend into the deltoid space. So that's why we call this as subacromial subdeltoid bursa. This is the red one. The with this green one will be the axillary recess below the inferior uh, below the inferior labrum. Then this is the sagittal section. We will see scapula, uh, glenoid, uh, coracoid, and we can see this with subscapularis. This will be the This will be the subcoracoid bursa, and this will be the subscapularis bursa. So here we can see very beautifully supraspinatus muscle touching, and above the supraspinatus we will see this extended uh, below the deltoid. This is the subacromial subdeltoid bursa, and then this will be the sub uh, subscapularis, and this will be the subcoracoid. Last is the neurovascular bundles. If we are seeing the axial section, we will see the spinoclinoid notch. And this spinal cord notch will contain the suprascapular nerve. If you are seeing the coronal section, you will see a quadrangular uh, space, and this quadrangular space will have axillary nerve. So now let's review what we have done till now. If, uh, starting first with the coronal images, if we are seeing the coronal sections, we will uh, we can see supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. As well as the subscapular muscle, but the main one which we the uh, the main tendon which we see is the supraspinatus. We can see the labrums also. We can see superior and inferior labrum. As with superior and inferior, labrum, we can see superior and inferior glenohumeral ligaments also. Inferior glenohumeral ligaments के साथ we can also see the axillary recess. We can also see above the supraspinatus. We can see the acromic uh, sorry acromic clavicle joint. And below the acromic clavicle joint and above the supraspinatus, we can then also see subacromial subdeltoid bursa. On axillary sections, we can see we can see the subscapularis muscle tendon its insertion. We can see infraspinatus muscle tendon insertion. We can see biceps in between. We can see transverse femoral ligament above. We can see the uh, we can see the anterior. At posterior labrum, in the anterior labrum, we can see the middle glenohumeral ligament also. So next, we can see, uh, tell about the sagittal sections also. In number one is the acromial shape. We can see, tell the Biglani classification. In the Biglani classification, we can have type one is flat inferior, type two is curved uh, concave inferior, type three is hooked inferior, and type four is convex inferior. We can also tell about this muscle that is supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. Uh, we can also tell about the subscapularis. We can tell about the coracohumeral ligament, spinocerebellar ligament, medial glenohumeral ligament, inferior glenohumeral ligament. We can talk about. We can uh, also talk about acromic clavicle osteoarthritis. We can also talk about subcoracoid, bursa, subscapularis, bursa also. So again, if we are talking about the coronal images. Tendon. We can talk about uh, supra, infra, teres, and subscapularis. But the main one is supraspinatus ligament. Wise, we can uh, talk about superior glenohumeral ligament and inferior glenohumeral ligament. Bones. Right. We can talk about the main acromial clavicle osteoarthritis. Labrum. Wise, we can talk about superior and inferior labrum. Below the inferior labrum, we can also see the axillary recess. Bursa. Wise, we can see the uh, subacromial subdeltoid bursa and axillary recess also. So, like this, in this section, you can see if we are starting from the anterior most, we will start seeing the coracoid process. And as we are going more and more posteriorly, below this, we will start seeing this acromial clavicle joint. And just below this acromial clavicle joint, we will see the supraspinatus muscle. This we will see the coracoid, and just below the coracoid, we will see subscapularis muscle. And as we are going more and more 
posterior we can see this is the glenoid cavity we will see superior and inferior labrum superior and inferior labrum will have superior and inferior glenohumeral ligaments we will see the biceps long head of and bicep attachment here it will oh sorry origin here and we will go straight and uh, take then pulley system and pulley and then it will go along the bicep groove you can see biceps also like this we can also see the sub sub dotted bursts also between the acromion clavicle joint and the supraspinatus here so this is all we can see then as we are going to see we can see infraspinatus at each minor also however for that we prefer using uh, seeing on axis sections so this is all we can see then axis section transverse as i have told you we can see the subscapus muscle its tendon its insertion we can see we can see uh, we can see subscapus muscle tendon its insertion of the lesser twist we can see the infraspinatus muscle tendon its insertion and then in between in them we can see the biceps we can see transverse femoral ligament ligament wise we can see the uh, in this is axis section is now so we can see the middle glenohumeral ligament, ligament in the anterior labrum bones wise we can see all the humerus we can see clearly we can look for hill sac lesion also we can see Labrum wise, we can see anterior and posterior labrum. In the anterior labrum, we can see the mammalian ligament, humeral ligaments. So one more thing we have to take care of is as we are going uh, from superior to inferior, this is acromion. We can see, and this is an important section to uh, to rule out os acromial. Uh, so this is an important section to rule out os acromial. And the first muscle we are seeing here. Is this supraspinatus in uh, going over the humeral head, and as we are going more inferiorly, we can see that this is the glenoid cavity. This is the anterior and posterior labrum. And anterior labrum will have middle glenoid humeral ligament. This is the subscapularis muscle. Its tendon, its insertion. We will see the infraspinatus muscle tendon, its insertion. Between we have see the long head of biceps and transverse humeral ligament. We can also see the corrugated muscles here. So this all we can see. On the axis sections, then coming to the sagittal sections. In sagittal section, tendon wise, we can see all the tendons, but mainly it is used to see the muscle bulk, uh, fatty inf uh, fatty infiltration, and muscle atrophy. Ligament wise, we can see the labrum. We can see the superior. We can see attachment of long head of bicep. We can see the superior glenohumeral ligament. We can see middle glenohumeral. We can see inferior glenohumeral ligament. Bones wise, we can see acromion clavicle joint. We can see we can rule out the acromion clavicle osteoarthritis. Sagittal is very important to see the acromion shape and see the Biglani classification. Labrum and then bursa. Bursa we can see subcoracoid, subdeltoid bursa. We can see very beautifully here. Labrum we can see labrum as a whole here. We have told you now labrum we can see labrum as a whole then coracoid ligament, uh, biceps. Uh, so we middle and inferior so we can see coracoid uh, labrum also as a whole in sagittal sections.